My name is Terry Wright, and I am the director of Berwick Community TV. And you are in Berwick, Maine, which is the southernmost town you can get to on the state of Maine. So Berwick Community TV is a public, educational, and government, what we call PEG station. We have two channels. One is government only, and that shows meetings such as planning board, selectmen, school board meetings. We also show things for town committees, such as the Envision Berwick group and some of our boat people who like to use the river, those type of things. Our public educational one shows graduations and uh, school concerts, plays, that type of thing. But we also do a lot with our library in town. They have speakers and presentations and things like that that we put up as well. So our mission is basically to provide informational um, videos that uh, help the public understand what's going on in their community and that provide resources and where to find those resources. I'm really kind of the only full-time person, um, and that took a long time to get. The station turns 10 years old this year, um, and that's an exciting landmark for us because we weren't sure we were gonna make it there. We have one part-time assistant director who assists with videotaping, editing, um, programming when he has to, um, but he fills in when I can't be at places and doing things. And then we have a part-time who works one or two meetings a month, broadcast technician who handles just the meetings inside our studio. So some of the most challenging aspects of being a director of a small community access station such as BCTV are timing and, and having enough time to do it all. You have to remember that we, we're expected to not only videotape and edit, but we're also supposed to program stations, troubleshoot technology, um, handle audio, um, set up appointments, train, create the training manuals that anybody would use if they came in, along with the regular stuff, paperwork and um, sheets and meetings and that type of thing. So I think that's one of our harder positions to be. Uh, the other piece that's really difficult is having enough money to do what you really would like to do. Um, public access stations such as this um, rely on franchise fees alone. And the franchise fees are disappearing. People are cutting the cable and you can't blame them. It costs a lot of money and it's not providing what they really want. And then the third piece of that, I think, is probably getting people to understand who we are and how you could utilize these resources. Um, getting the word out to the public and to residents is a little difficult. If um, people in this area, and it doesn't have to be a Berwick resident, we do, you know, accept people from other towns because we do cover other towns. Um, while we are mainly a Berwick station, um, we do cover events and things in North Berwick, Lebanon, and some of our neighboring communities. If they'd like to get involved, call me. I'd love to hear from people. Um, they could borrow equipment. Um, they could come in and help us edit. Um, creating slides for the slideshow. I'm always looking for people to do that. Um, take videos. I mean, everybody has a camera these days. If you're at your child's game and you're watching what's going on and you're videotaping it, send it to us. We'd love to put something like that on our station. Um, but a lot of it has to do is come in and talk with me. Tell me what you want to do so that we can kind of match you up with something you'd enjoy. People in Berwick, and you do have to be a Berwick resident in order to um, borrow equipment from our station, mostly because the funds that help support this station come from only Berwick residents. 
So we have a Canon XF100 and a Canon XF105 camera that you can borrow. These are bigger cameras and I understand they're intimidating, so some people don't like that. Each of these will come with a tripod. We have Manfrotto tripods for the larger cameras and I have a smaller tripod for the smaller camera. We have a GoPro Hero 4 you can borrow and we've got all kinds of equipment that goes with that, whether it be a head unit or a body unit or one that clamps onto your handlebars for doing bike tours or something like that. Um, you can borrow that. And then we have um, equipment as far as like a computer, um, but that requires staying here and you can come in and I'll help teach you how to edit and work with you on the equipment as far as making your own video. My office hours for BCTV are typically 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And that's because the town office is closed on Friday. However, my hours extend beyond that time. So a lot of editing and programming and things like that I may do from my house. But I meet with people all the time. If, if somebody says to me, you know, I can't get there till four to pick up a piece of equipment, I live two miles from the station, so I'll drive down and, and meet with that person. So I don't say that my office hours are set by any means. We, our station is actually located inside the Burgess meeting room at the Berwick Town Hall. And we have always been located here. We started out in a closet, which is where our uh, server room now is located. And we graduated two years ago into what used to be the Historical Society room, which is now our studio and control room. And that's a great setup because we've got the board meeting room right next door. So we have our digital cameras, which are all remote, and we can see what we're doing um, through a window. We don't show commercials. You're not gonna, you can watch a program from beginning to end on public access stations without interruption. So when that meeting starts, you don't have to worry about, oh geez, now I've got 10 minutes of commercials to go somewhere and come back. But you can stop it. We offer on demand, which is, is great for people who can't watch it while it's going on. I, I think the biggest part is we're local. We're offering you things that the bigger channels like Channel 8, Channel 6, Channel 13 in Maine, they don't offer you this. We're, we're covering the Berwick Fire Station, for example. When that was being built, you didn't see any of the other channels coming down to cover it. We covered the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, same with this prime spot, the edge at Berwick is coming in. As the, the demolition happened, we covered it beginning to end. Um, and you're not gonna get that with a bigger station. So I think that's two of the main reasons I like public access. We had been doing the school board meetings pretty consistently as well as concerts and plays and the graduation and um, everything stopped. Um, and as a matter of fact, I remember saying to my husband when COVID hit that, oh my God, I'm so bored. I, I don't have enough to do. Um, and what it did is I, I immediately had to go into a whole different um, transformation, such as setting up Zoom meetings. So. Um, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, one of the other things that I think stations are looking at, and we had talked about this, is how do we fund our, our access stations? Borough Community TV, um, one of the things that I and Ralph have been working on is uh, looking at sponsors, donors, underwriting, all of those things, and I've done tons of research on it, looking at access stations from here to California and back. The other thing is we're working with businesses for the first time. So we've basically been a nonprofit government meeting type thing. And this, we're starting a partnership with the Chamber of Commerce in Summersworth, which actually does Berwick, North Berwick, Lebanon, Sanford, uh, not Sanford, I'm sorry, Rollinsford. Uh, and we're uh, doing a small piece, a PSA for them to recruit new businesses in Berwick. And we've started a um, street smart program with a brand new volunteer who is, you know, I'll come to your business and highlight what you do and tell the public who you are and what you offer. Um, just give me a call. And that's uh, our first one is going to be set up hopefully this week with one of the local vendors uh, here in town.
So the Community Television Association of Maine, or CTAM as we like to call it, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And their mission is to represent and assist people in the media industry. And that includes municipalities. So we help municipalities who are negotiating franchise agreements, for example. Or we offer resources to those who are looking at having a franchise agreement. And that's huge because the cable industries aren't always going to tell you the truth regarding what you can and cannot get with your franchise agreement. Whereas we use model language that is very basic, but it gives you the protections that you really want to have in place when setting up a public access station. We also offer resources and assistance to our members. Um, so one of the things that we're looking to do is set up a resource center where members, access station personnel and members in general can go to look at, okay, you know, I'm looking for a video on this or I'm looking for help with, you know, technology piece of equipment that I'm having trouble with. Um, that's a great area for me in particular because I didn't come from the background of media, example. Um, ten years ago, I started as a volunteer, and today I'm the director. Um, basically, what happened is six months after I got here, the person who was running it decided to leave. Literally, just walked out one day. And I had to learn everything, and I did. But that's kind of where this program can take you, is from being a videographer to being someone who actually runs the station. So CTAM helped me along the way in learning the ropes. And I think that's an important piece for personnel. We also help with people in the media industry. So say you're a producer and you're looking to get your video out there. If you're a member of CTAM, we're gonna help you do that by sending it to our members and saying, hey, you know, we'd like you to check out this video. Maybe you'd like to put it up on your station for viewing. That's gonna get that producer a wider audience and get them hopefully known so that future times when they send us something, it'll be quickly looked at and said, oh yeah, I saw this, I, I really like this producer. Um, and that's a benefit that you can't get anywhere else. I, I will say the Community Television Association of Maine for me has been an organization that is there when you need them. And honestly, if, if it had not been for that organization, I'm not sure that I would have continued trying to learn and discover how to make this work. I wrote the first operational plan in 2014 for this station. We have met all the goals in that plan and then some. But this organization is trying to revive right now. We're trying to become the hub that is needed in the state for community access stations to survive. As we see our franchise fees disappearing, we've got to find new ways to make things work and to keep these stations alive because we're the last vestige of local news. Newspapers have disappeared. We are the only place covering the news of here. And I think that that's an important piece for our organization to remember. And we need to survive and we need everyone's help to do that.